Uh, my name is Dick Imvule. I'm an editor at Radio Simba. Uh, mine goes to the lead of opposition. Honorable uh, Mpoga, you realize that uh, there has been a culture in the opposition and uh, you realize that Honorable uh, uh, Latigo handed over to Honebu Nandala Mafabi, Nandala Mafabi handed over to Wafula, Wafula handed over to Winikiza, Winikiza handed over to Honebu Wall, and then you took up the mantle. After two years of, uh, two and a half years, do you see yourself continuing as the lob, or you are going to hand over to another person? I know you poked us when you were starting your statement, but I thought I should ask this question without fear or favor. Although you are my friend, I had to come. Then the other question is that, uh, how do you explain the thin ground of your members, the cabinet members? You realize that uh, only a handful are here. Although Honebo, uh, the spokesperson has said that uh, many are coming, but after two years, this should be a milestone. You know, They should not have an excuse of not being here. How do you explain that? And in the introductions, I'm not seen any person being intro, uh, being introduced to have represented the party secretariat. Don't they know about this event today? Thank you very much. Uh, I was so shocked when my colleague also, the honorable member of Umane Mpiok Bitiana, by not recognizing me, I had him evule, the rest. But that is on a light note. Uh, to start with the point of my colleague, um, Mivule, uh, the issue of uh, your term, uh, what is that inner feeling in you as this term comes to an end, the term of two and a half years? What does that inner feeling tell you right now as the leader of opposition who's about to, as the term ends? Uh, then the other thing is on the, the personal reflection. What is that turn off point? where you would uh, maybe regret serving under this current regime of NRM as the leader of, of, of opposition. Um, uh, the other question for me uh, is about, um, how do you describe the current political jungle where you serve? Considering all political parties, how do you describe it with the intentions um, of trying to change the current regime to a democratic way of governance. Um, I'm Delop. Wait, I, I raise my questions, then I sit. Uh, the third point for me uh, will go to the to the report, the recent report on cooperatives. Uh, what is your personal view on the position MPs who are alleged to be on that list? who are alleged to have embezzled some of the cooperative funds. Uh, then my last point goes to Honorable Joel Senyoni. Uh, how do you feel about the wonderful reports that you make in your committee, the recommendations that you make and later are not put into implementation? Thank you so much. Thank you, I think Sadeb, we can respond to those questions because they're quite a number. So the operation culture, um, of handing over, that's not a problem. You know, certain norms are written, others are called preemptory norms. Okay, they're not written, but they become a matter of practice. But when they arise, they do not cause adrenalines to rise. And as the head of the opposition, I, I am part and partial of uh, a political culture we are trying to grow that when a change happens, it's not a crisis. It only becomes an obligation to uh, an occupant of that public office to do good. And whoever is in office be supported by all and sundry to do their work. It, it is as simple as that. I don't think that should cause any adrenaline. Um, of course, I poked the, 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 the media he observed. Uh, it was purposeful to one, to appreciate the fact that um, the, the office has been profiled to a level more than, um, than ever before, that it causes uh, debate when actually the duty 
to do public good lies with the government. So the media has allowed government to get away with the murder, with the corruption, uh, lack of service, and they paid attention to the opposition office that has no resources to implement to do services. I think as the editor, you question the wisdom of your reporters in laying, uh, in a concentrating. I have not seen a debate on a failed service delivery by the prime minister and a failure to answer questions in parliament and running all over the place uh, singing a great picture as a prime minister instead of uh, looking for services, uh, offering services uh, to the people of Uganda. But I appreciate there are a few members uh, in here. Uh, Mr. Amble, we are dealing with adults. Well, many members communicated they were traveling back from Chigali. I'm human enough to understand that. But also, I can't rule out the fact that some members are already in a holiday mode. But I cannot be a person to compel people to be here. The only person that reached out to me was the chief whip, and he called me rushing home to sort out uh, a family matter, and I can understand that. So when you meet them in the call, you ask them where they were. That is their question, not my question. Uh, nobody from the party secretariat, you, you want to advise us on true invite here? Was that your intention? We did not invite them. It was a media interaction between the officer of the leader of the opposition and the media. I wanted this space to be occupied by members of parliament. That's why you are free to fire at anyone here. When, if my party president was here, it would be about the party president. So we wanted this to be about parliament, the opposition and the parliament and their work. So feel free to fire to them. So when we have space for when you want the party to be involved and discuss intra and extra party issues, we invite them. So I thought this space would best be occupied by the people, the party sent here and obligated. In fact, I, I expect you to ask people to account for the obligations to the duties given to them by the party from within NUP and without. So that's why I wanted them to occupy this space. Maybe some of them have even never had occasion to account for their work. So this is their space. Allow them space to, if the Secretary General was here, it will be about him. When will a humble man like Joel get space to speak in the presence of his president? So we, that's why we choose. I will my man from Kagorogoro, Chukuba Mutwe, Kayemba Solo have occasion to, to speak to the media in the presence of the president. So sometimes this space is gazetted for humble humans to also speak to the country. Kindly take it in that uh, light. But whenever we do and whatever we do, we are obligated to inform uh, as a matter of respect to the party secretariat. Um, Mr. Francis Rubega from Sapiensha, some of office, what is my inner feeling? I have expressed my inner feeling in my preambles here to you that uh, we have worked, we have not withered, we have worked together. It's not easy to put together a team and that team delivers. We are a six party platform and uh, getting those people to work. These parties are founded on various ideological foundations. They come here with different objectives, but you must figure out a mechanism of filtering those objectives and consolidate them into a workable framework that will speak to the common voice of the opposition. So my inner feeling is that um, we have done a lot, but it's not yet Uhuru. We would have had you know, a sense of deja vu if we'll probably have delivered on our most critical objective of regime change, okay? So I feel um, uh, a sense of pride in how we've been able to consolidate um, the team amidst 
various challenges, including the regime poking at the opposition. Midway, you have some of uh, the opposition party members uh, cross. That's not a small thing. But when they cross, as the leader, you have a duty to, to, to gather the, the remaining team members to play their role effectively and, uh, and well. So I think deeply that uh, we have worked together amid these serious challenges. Remember, we started this work uh, from a highly controversial, divisive, violent election. So this work began at the backdrop of that. And the country held its breath as well as the opposition, beaten, scattered, battered, violently, will be able to assemble and have a sense of direction. So I'm here to state without a fear of contradiction that uh, we have expressed ourselves well amidst the, these uh, enormous challenges. I hope I have answered you. What is the turn off? What did you mean the turning point or regret observing as the law? I only regret of not being prime minister. I should have been the prime minister, not the law. If you're asking the regret, because my party won the general election. So the regret was that um, we're not announced. How do you look at me as the prime minister of the republic? Compared to being a law, maybe things have been different. Otherwise, um, I cannot say that I regret being a law. It's a big honor to lead colleagues. It's a very huge responsibility. It's a huge honor. It's also an opportunity to show that actually you have a sense of understanding of this obligation. Okay? And that kind of responsibility, I cannot regret. I cannot regret what, how I have been able to summon my basic skills to bear upon this responsibility and how the team has responded to my call, to my direction, to my guidance. Um, I never grew up with any of these MPs. The people began to send them here. They all came as adults. Nobody made 18 at swearing in. They all came as adults. So to be able to consolidate them and have an output for me was a huge responsibility which I pride in as having executed, even in the face of a lot of challenges that I think are not necessarily insurmountable, but we uh, have tried to do. How would you describe the current jungle? Describe it from all over the opposition, actors, parties. I think it's not the opposition that is in a, a crisis. The country faces uh, some form of uh, existential threat as a nation state. The level at which political actors perceive responsibility is scary. And of course, the rate and the response of uh, political players in the opposition is also a bit disturbing. Because of regime longevity, brutality and intolerance, some layers of the opposition have become a bit in some of our political layers are getting tired and they need a renewal. That's why you hear some people, some political actors, probably have begun subscribing to the regime, either out of lack of direction, either they are a, a, a little, you know, uninspired to, to work differently, is a huge duty, but all of us are obligated. In the face of uh, the civic space that is being frozen, it becomes a huge obligation on anybody seeking to play a part in this space, to be strong, to self-express, to speak out strongly and make their intentions known. The only problem a political actor can visit on this country is not making their intentions known, to grandstand, to appear to be serious when actually acting unseriously. So if you ask me, that's the challenge. And I challenge myself 
and all that intend to change the direction of this country to realize that we face a very serious challenge after a regime of 40 years to undo the evil that has been planted into this country, to kill the seed of intolerance, of corruption, of murder, because the ongoing debate, for example, of human rights violations before, during, and after the 2021 general election, it is an attempt by the ruling party to settle a political score by coercion. It's an attempt to solve the political problem of the country using force. And this the country must reject. All the opposition political actors must understand the breadth of this problem and rise to reject the overtures of the ruling party to settle the political dispute using force. Your last question, the report of cooperatives. Uh, what do you make of the opposition member that we have mentioned? If a member was mentioned as having participated in this corruption, they should face the law. There's only one law in this land. And whoever is mentioned in the report must face the law. If they had no obligation, if there's no questions to answer, the law is sorted. Do you want me to, to write another report? The report is a public document. So I, 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 I do not have anything to, to sympathize or unless people should face the law, if they have questions to answer, they must answer them. Corruption is person to holder, okay? It's not institutional that somebody is doing so for the benefit of their community. So that and the other reports before parliament where individuals have been implicated or indicted, they must face the law to the letter.